the uh, QSBS, which is the uh, super sexy soundy uh, yeah, <laughs> qualified small a, business. Yeah, I, I call it the Web three of uh, of small business. Right, it's like that glitzy, glamorous term that everyone's in love with, and and uh, no one's really sure where where it's going to go from here. Um, yeah. So I'll, I'll say from the outset, QSBS can be incredible, but it's it's pretty new. Um, and in fact, in the infrastructure bill, uh, there was a provision to remove it. Uh, there's a lot of chatter out there to remove the QSBS. It's seen as sort of a backdoor tax loophole. Um, it ended up getting pulled out at the last minute, so it's still there, but there's a big giant target painted on the back of QSBS. So um, I, I always like to tell folks I talk to, clients on Twitter or whatever, um, you, you gotta understand we're one. We're always one election away from blowing up a tax structure. Yeah. USBS is a is a great example. You know, next session of Congress, uh, this could go the way of the dinosaur. And and if you went all in, you're scrambling to restructure and limit your exposure. So, yeah. So what is it? The qualified small business stock. That's the. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's uh, for five years or more. If you hold a, uh, you exclude up to ten million in capital gains. Yeah. Yeah. What what this says is that if you're a qualified small business. Um, and there are some strict rules on what that can be. The, the principal ones are um, you can't be, for example, a professional services firm. So a law firm could never be a qualified small business. We don't have the benefit of qualified small business stock. Uh, you can't be a REIT. Um, there, there are a few other things, a farm. Um, but generally, your, your rank and file, the, the normal small businesses that, that our clients are looking at, your HVAC and roofing companies, your tech companies, whatever, um, you can qualify for, to be a small business if at the time that you issue stock, um, your gross assets are less than $50 million. And if they're less than $50 million, that stock that you issue to new, new stock to, to investors is qualified small business stock. And what that means is if that shareholder holds the qualified small business stock for five years or more, upon an exit, they can exclude... Um, potentially, you know, $10 million of capital gains. What, what the code actually says is it's the greater of $10 million or your basis in, in the stock. So it can actually be substantially higher than $10 million if your basis is more money, right? If, if your basis is 5 million, you could exclude 50 million. The way this normally plays out though is that the stock is issued at startup time when it really has no value. And so the, the calculation is being done basically from zero, which means you're, you're, uh, you know, greater of 10 million or 10 times your basis, um, ends up being a, a $10 million exclusion. Yeah. The most incredible part of QSBS is it's an exclusion per person, like per shareholder and per company. So you as an investor can hold qualified small business stock in 10 different companies. And if all 10 of those companies have an exit in the same year, you get your $10 million exclusion on every, ten, every single one of those companies, right? Um, it's not limited to one exclusion per, per taxpayer. And the other reason that that's important, that it's per person, is a lot of times if, you're, if you have significant value in these companies, you can do some advanced tax planning and, for example, um, uh, have some of the stock issued to a spouse. Now you just doubled your exclusion because your spouse gets 10 million and you get 10 million. Yeah. You could issue some to your kids for estate planning purposes. I've got three kids. So potentially 50 million across the five of us, right? Me, my spouse and my three children. So it's, it's an incredibly useful tool when the company qualifies for it. Um, and you, you, you qualify for the holding period of five years. Yeah, and it's um, a big sense in a roll up. I mean, if you bought an HVAC company and it's two million EBA, but you're still multiples are small, you roll up twenty five of those. Now it, it makes a hundred percent sense. Yeah, yeah it, it can be incredible. It 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 became really popular, and the reason it, it got implemented was post financial crash. Um, that's when it went to the hundred percent exemption um, to kind of stimulate the economy and what what they thought this would do would encourage a large influx in startup investing. And so it became really popular in tech startups. Um, and no one really appreciated how useful it can be in, for example, an HVAC roll-up model, right? Um, and, and because those tech startups were so risky, the idea was, 
well, let's really incentivize these investors to go put capital in and make it worth their while and give them a huge exclusion. Well, now we as, as small business investors, you know, buying roofing companies can, can appreciate yeah. and, and realize some, some real benefit. Um, now, it doesn't come without some, draw, some drawbacks. There you go. You're scrolling yeah. to my next, my next tweet. Um, qualified small business stock can only be stuck in a C corp. Um, so you can't be an S corp or LLC. And what does that mean practically? You're paying corporate income tax and dividend tax on any any dividends that you pay out of that C-Corp. So it gets back to our original discussion on C-Corps. You have to weigh the pros and cons of what's my long-term exit strategy against what is my short-term potential tax liability. And the reason this became so popular with tech startups is they usually operated at losses for several years. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then could act on large much. valuations. So they weren't paying any taxes for several years, and then they go have a half a billion dollar exit, and all the investors walk away paying no tax, right? Yeah. Um, but so in your HVAC roll up, you don't necessarily get that same benefit. You may very well have material profits that you're paying taxes on, and there's a pro pro con to to be weighed there. Yeah. Um, I mentioned not all businesses qualify. The final point. This is a super important one um, because I think people don't appreciate this as well by far the most popular way to exit in the small business world are asset sales and asset sales don't qualify for the exemption for qualified small business stock. In order to realize the benefit of that exemption, the exit has to be a stock sale. Yeah. And so you're really going in on a model where you limit your, your potential transaction options down the road. What that means practically is not that you can't exit in a stock sale, but what it does mean is that there ends up usually being some negotiation with a potential buyer for the extra risk they may be taking on in a stock sale and the benefit you stand to gain from the qualified small business tax treatment. And there's, there may be some negotiations, some, okay, we'll, we'll massage the, the purchase price a little bit, maybe kick up the indemnity escrow a little bit more for, for trailing liabilities. But you as a seller are willing to do that because you stand to to write off, you know, to, to be exempt from $10 million. Yeah, the, the seller likes a stock sale because they, you know, they're selling the assets and the liabilities, whereas the buyer likes the asset sale. That's right. That's right. Um, yeah. So that so not without some drama. But All right. So let's uh, move on. So uh let me before before we go on that. So where does that stand on this legislation, the QSBS? So, so, so it got pulled out of the infrastructure bill. Um, there was a provision to do away with QSBS entirely. This this whole thing we just talked about would have gone away, and everyone on all these exits from what used to be qualified small business stock would have been paying tax. Right. That provision was pulled out in the final bill that got passed. So it so it didn't go away. It's still there. Okay. And it's existing form. It's a hundred percent exemption up to the. 10 million or, or 10 times your basis. I, I only raise it to point out that it being in the bill until the last minute and getting pulled out as a compromise or whatever was great that it happened, but it's just to point out there's a giant target on the back of QSBS and folks that are not in favor of it are not going to stop coming after it. So again, you're always an election away from blowing up your tax structure. Uh, you know, any session of Congress could finally squeak through a bill that does away with it. Um, and that could be a massive tax liability uh, if, if they do. So, yeah, something to be mindful of. Depends on the administration changes. Yeah. So want the benefits of a C-Corp to trap cash in your holding company to redeploy throughout your organization. You may structure a C-Corp hold co with LSCs for operating entities. This is where we're going to get profits throw, flow through the chain of ownership tax-free until it hits the C-Corp hold co. That's right. So your LLCs are disregarded. So all of the profit that your LLC operating subsidiaries realize, the IRS disregards those entities, it rolls up onto the C-Corp, it gets consolidated, and the C-Corp pays corporate income tax currently at 21% on all of that consolidated income, but it, then it's trapped there. They don't pay anything else until you issue a dividend. So if you're wanting to trap cash in your hold co to redeploy for corporate development, to buy more businesses, things like that, having a C-Corp dealing with your 21% corporate income tax 
but with the flexibility to redeploy cash however you want throughout your organization could be a very valid and very sound strategy. Yeah. Why you want to start a hold code? Yeah. Um, we talked to you just mentioned that. Uh flexibility allocate progress to pro rata. We talked about that. The C Corp subs keep some cash inside to fund growth and pain can other benefits. Okay, we talked about that. Uh, want the benefit of uh, qualified small business stock for a specific acquisition and portfolio. Uh, you may elect to have your whole cold LLC that owns the QSBS in a new C Corp subsidiary. Yeah, so let, let's pause on this one for a second because we didn't yeah. mention this with, with QSBS. But the other important factor with QSBS is the only benefit you as an owner get from the QSBS exemption is on an exit, right? So if you are a small business buyer that has a long-term buy and hold strategy, you want to build an empire that your kids are going to work in and you're going to pass it on to your children and they're going to work it. And this structure you're building is going to exist for 40 years. Qualified small business stock probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense because your ultimate strategy is not an exit, right? It's a long-term buy and hold. So what if, you have a long-term buy and hold strategy in whatever industry verticals you want, but you identify this great flip opportunity. I can acquire this business, put my skills to use, triple, quadruple the profitability in the next five years and sell this thing back out of the portfolio. Well, you may have a whole strategy for your general structure and decide just on that one, we're going to make that a C-Corp, do qualified small business stock for that C-Corp, because I know I'm going to exit that people. And the point here is just strategies can mix and match and layer and have, have multiple kind of arms and considerations to these things. There's no real one size fits all. And the only qualification with the qualified small business stock is it can't be owned by another C Corp. But as long as it's owned by a pass through entity, it can be a downstream subsidiary. So you can have that one isolated operating entity as a C-Corp because you know your strategy is short-term, increase profitability, flip it and get it back out of the portfolio. And as long as that's owned by a pass-through hold toe, an LLC in this case, you can do that. Yeah, that's um, how so that called Ferris Lofsky. He, he buys these $100,000 businesses from Flippa does his four things and then flips it within 12, 18 months or whatever it is until he finishes his four. Yeah, and and there's the final thing I'll say. QSBS um, generally doesn't have any filing requirements. It's just a qualification. Um, and if you qualify, you, you recognize the exemption. The one exception to that is if you sell qualified small business stock prior to your five-year holding period, as long as you roll the profits into more qualified small business stock, you can actually tax the holding period. Um, and there is a filing for that. You then have to make an affirmative filing with the IRS to let them know that you're electing to roll over into new qualified small business. But, but the point there is that that means that, for example, this, this strategy of very short term, 12, 18 months by flip, you could still potentially do that uh, under qualified small business stock as long as that flipping is into additional qualified small business. So yeah, so you take the profits from the flip, put it back in a pass through and keep growing it until five years and you're exempt from that. Not not a pass through, it has to flip into more qualified small business. Right, right, it, 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 yeah, it, you move right. it back in to- That's right, so, so if, you for hold for two, yeah. if you hold for two years and exit, use, your, use the proceeds to buy more qualified small business stock you get to tax those two years and you only have to hold the new business for three years to get your full five years. And then you get the full exemption when you exit that second business. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's sort of like a 1041 for small businesses. There's, there's more nuance. That's a tortured uh, um, analogy, but you can kind of think of it that way, that there is some, some opportunity to tax. Yeah. This is what we talked about. This is the, what we just talked about. That's how Michael Barislavski is doing it with, um, making acquisitions, rolling it over uh, into the new uh, yeah. the new acquisition and flip. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, um, yeah. Yeah. And finally, remember, we're always one election away from the structure blowing up. 
<laughs> yeah, and 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 elections aside, it's it, it's important to to note. You know, a lot of people call us wanting some help with some some hold co strategy, and I want to know what my structure is and implement that structure so that I'm good to go. And it's just it's really important to have a conversation. Tax tax treatment things like this are always evolving, um, and, and so your structure and strategy can be very organic and probably needs to be very organic. And five years from now, your structure and strategy may, may end up looking a lot different than what you implement today. Again, depending on, you know, new election does away with qualified small business stock, the corporate income tax rate goes back up and makes the C corp less interesting again. You know, there's a lot that could happen and you just, you, you have to be nimble and, and understand you don't get to find the perfect structure, implement it today, and you're good to go for the next 30 years until well, you retire on a beach somewhere. Are, are you grandfathered in? If you started a uh, strategy uh, QSBS and you distributed or sold stock, uh, are you grandfathered in? Or if the new legislation, new administration comes in saying we're different? Depends on, depends on the legislation. Right? Yeah. The legislation well, could say no, right? From here on from here on out, there is no qualified small business ex ex exemption starting January 1, 2023. Doesn't matter how long you hold it when you acquired the stock, there, there's no exemption. They could, they could have a, a grandfather. That's what they did um, when the Obama administration raised. So the so qualified small business stock has been around 25 or so years. The Clinton administration implemented it, but it was, a, it was only a portion of the capital gains that was exempt. In 2010, the Obama administration raised it to 100% exemption. And what they did is they grandfathered in the other prior. So if you were in that first window where the Clinton administration first uh, put it in place, and I, I'm making up the numbers because I don't remember what they are, but say the exemption was 40%, any qualified small business stock acquired in that window only gets the 40% exemption. Then and the George W. Bush administration, where they raised it to 60%. Again, I don't remember the numbers, so I'm making it up. Uh, anything in that window, 60%, and then anything from January 1, 2010 onward is the 100% uh, exemption. They could do a similar thing to phase it out, but it's 100% dependent on how a bill gets written. It doesn't have to be that way. They could just eliminate it entirely and it goes away. So it's like a, that's, that's just part of the risk. Legislation of the meatpacking plant. Yeah. So, uh, mm -hmm. Kevin, this has been incredibly educational. So I, I do want to make sure this disclaimer is out. This thread is strictly for educational purposes and is not made for the purpose of soliciting legal service or employment. But I am going to recommend SMB Lawyer. <laughs> so because uh, these guys are great. Kevin, I want to appreciate that, man. This has been fantastic. Yeah, yeah cer certainly appreciate the kind words, John, and the, the chance to come on here and, and talk about this stuff. Um, it's, it's fantastic. Come find us on Twitter. We're, we're always on there. Me, you know, my partners, myself, uh, a lot of other folks, yeah. Yeah. Uh, a lot, lot of other folks doing really high quality content in the space. And, and we're always happy to, to chat and talk, hold codes, talk business buying, talk business selling, talk about the healthy rivalry between lawyers and brokers, you know, what, whatever it is. So uh, would, would love to hear from anyone. It's perfect. So thank you very much for uh, being on my show. If you like this, make sure you share, like, or, uh, you know, comment below. So if you have any questions, definitely comment below. And I will uh, attach this document in the comments. So Kevin, thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks again, John. All right. Uh, let me Stop recording. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure you're a subscriber by clicking on this button right here down below. And if you want to watch more Serial Acquire interviews, click on this button right here. If you're ready to buy your first business, get my course at dealflowsystem.net right here. Take care. Cheers, John.